Okay, hey, welcome back for task E of the Fundamentals of Instruction. This is Instructor Responsibilities and Professionalism. Uh, it is bad that we have to talk about this in a way because you would think that all flight instructors would be both responsible and professional at the same time, but uh, the, that is not the case. And so the FAA has deemed it appropriate that we talk about uh, instructor responsibilities and professionalism. Talked a little bit about my own personal experience with uh, my primary flight instructor, great guy, a few little nuances here and there, but overall I had a great experience. Uh, he was there when he said he was going to be there, and he was professional with me all the time. I really appreciated that, and that experience has stuck out. So let us blackboard here, and we'll jump right into it. Let's start talking about ins uh, instructor responsibilities. Number one. Help learn. Now, I made that sound really dumb because I want you to remember it. Help students learn. Enjoyable lessons lead to motivated students. And we all know that motivated students lead to successful students. We have to provide them with adequate instruction. Um, you have to get to know your students. Each person is different, and personality traits are conducive to different learning styles. So uh, how do we help them learn? We get to know them. What is their family situation? Uh, what's their uh, education background? You know, what kind of learners are they? Are they auditory, visual, kinesthetic? How, how do they best learn? So we need to help them learn. Um, we also uh, want to learn how they don't learn, I guess, if that makes sense. So that we we don't harp on a, a particular uh, teaching method or belabor it if it's not effective for them. So uh, that's basically helped students learn. We want them to be to be motivated. Our second responsibility. These aren't in any particular order. It's the order the book uses. So uh, we'll stick with it. Standards. Standards of performance. Remember that the practical test standard is a testing document. It's not a teaching document, right? We, we don't simply uh, train to the bare minimum. So how am I going to summarize that? Uh, ETS equals testing, right? Not training. Not training. So we don't look at it and say, okay, for this task, you have to be within plus or minus 100 feet. So you did it 100 feet, so that's good enough. You know, we, uh, we don't worry about the PTS when we're teaching a task or a skill. We worry about it during the final three hours of the, the cleanup. Um, we want them to be exact plus or minus zero. And then when it comes to the PTS, it's all within standard. We don't have to worry about it. Next. Talk about uh, minimizing student frustrations. So minimize frustration. Again, we have to motivate them and help them see their progress. Point out how uh, their landings have greatly improved, how their uh, tolerances for altitude holding have greatly improved. Keep them motivated and uh, keep them informed, not only of their progress, but, uh, you know, that's important, so I'm gonna put that down. Keep them informed. Nobody likes to walk into the unknown, and uh, especially into a particular lesson. Let them know what we're gonna be doing today. Let them know how they're progressing. Let them know what they can do differently, better. Um, again, treat them as an individual. Okay, each student is different. Each student has strengths and weaknesses, and we have to capitalize on those. You don't know what they are, you don't really know your student, right? So that goes back to number one. Treat them as individuals. Give credit when it's due, but um, give criticism at the same time. Um, let them know when they did good, let them know when they're deficient. Nobody wants to. 
uh, be lied to and told them they're doing and told they're doing great when they're actually not meeting the standard. It'll be a rude awakening when they come to uh, check ride day. They've been told their landings are awesome, and then the DPE or whoever uh, fails them because their landings are in fact not awesome. Along those lines, uh, be consistent. Consistency is key. If you're praising for a certain performance, then praise for that performance consistently. Um, now, that's not to say that they they can't progress. You should. Okay, this is going to be confusing. I can see uh, some of you raising an eyebrow already. Praise them when they're starting out and uh, they're not expected to have a high skill level. When they do something good, praise that. And then up the ante, right? Give them a new standard. So instead of uh, landing within the first 4,000 feet of the runway, let's do it in the first 3,000. And then when they do that, praise that. And then when they do it in the first 2,000, praise that. But up the ante, raise the bar. Okay, let's do it in the first 1,000 feet. When they do that, praise that. And then say, okay, you can do better. Let's get it within the first stripe. All right. And then when they do that, praise it. And then when they do it consistently, every time, remind them, that's good. Remember where you started at? Remember where you came from? So uh, be consistent with your praise. Don't criticize uh, performance one day and then praise it the next day and then criticize it the next day. Uh, that leads to confusion. Students don't respond well when they're confused, especially as to what they're, they should be doing. Finally, admit your own errors. If you make a mistake, own up to it. Let them know, you know what, I'm human. I've been doing this for X number of years. Um, I don't know everything. So let me get back to you on that and we'll both learn about it together. You'll gain their trust. You'll gain uh, quite a bit uh, of respect if you do that. Um, if you, on the other hand, if you make stuff up and you're wrong, you're going to lose their trust and they won't know what to trust you on uh, from that point forward. So you're effectively done as a teacher. When you start making stuff up and you start, uh, they start to find that you're wrong and putting out bad information, uh, your credibility is gone. It's shot. So keep that in mind. Don't, uh, don't be afraid to admit when you're wrong. Responsibilities. Uh, it goes without saying that a flight instructor has a ton of responsibility. You're responsible for their safety. You're responsible to their family for their safety. You're responsible to their friends and family and everybody, both in the air and on the ground, for their safety. Responsible for their education. So, I don't have to belabor the point, but a flight instructor has a ton of responsibilities. Let's talk about a few of them here. First of all, going back to kind of what we talked about in, in the responsibilities um, in the previous section, don't ridicule, right? Build them up. Flying is new for many people. Uh, they're not used to the physiological obstacles, um, the sounds, the sights. The feelings, you know, the feeling of uh, the G-forces as you make a steep turn or the stalling or things like that. Uh, don't laugh at the students. Um, it, uh, it goes against that self-esteem and motivating factor we talked about up here under responsibilities. Furthermore, um, we want to ensure their ability. What do I mean by ensuring ability? We, we want to be sure of their capabilities. So, where's that button again? 
I'm going to put don't recommend for check ride until ready. Man, if you want to shoot a student's confidence down, send them for a check ride before they're really ready. And you know what? I'm sad to say, maybe there's some cocky uh, students out there who think they know it all and need that. I'm not saying it's a bad thing. I'm saying for your your run of the mill student, don't recommend uh, them for a check ride until they're ready. Ensure they're capable and fully able uh, to do the tasks at hand. All right, we have a responsibility to be professional. Shocking to some, it better not be, and if it is, shame on you, because we should be professional all the time. We need to. Uh, how do you do that? Well, you need to accept the student for how they are. Uh, show respect. It's a two-way street. We respect the students; they'll respect us. Don't, uh, like I said earlier, don't ridicule them. Don't uh, demean them. Um, accept the student for who they are. It's part of being a professional aviator and being able to work with all kinds of people from all different backgrounds and experiences. Uh, your personal appearance is important. You think your student's going to take it serious or take you serious if you show up in uh, flip flops and a swimsuit? You know, probably not. Uh, professional attire is appropriate at all times. Um, along with this, our language. Not only what we say, but how we say it. It should go without saying that uh, cursing or vulgar language is uh, inappropriate. It'll turn students off and turn them away. Um, so not only what we say, how we say it, when we say it, the tone we say it with, the words we use, all are important for language. And finally, your own personal demeanor. Do you carry a flippant attitude? Uh, do you ex exhibit, this isn't important, we're gonna gloss over this, forget about this, I, I don't know why we're teaching this. Um, or do you admonish and recognize the importance of the tasks that uh, have been laid out and convey that to the student? Hey, this is really important, uh, we need to focus on this and make sure that we're doing this all right. Um, a professional, demeanor with the student is uh, going to set the tone for not only the lesson, but for their flying career, their flying experience. All right, another responsibility that we have is evaluation. Again, talked on it up above here, and uh, not, oops, and not recommending them for check ride until ready, right? One right here. Um, so, as a flight instructor, we are in the position position to evaluate their ability. We want to uh, have them demonstrate the task to us. Nothing um, is a better evaluation tool than to have them demonstrate. We uh, want to keep them informed and provide feedback of that demonstration. And when it's time to make corrections for errors, do it quickly and respectfully. If you let an error go by, you just created a new standard. So you know, when they're uh, losing a thousand feet of altitude during a stall, um, that is not the standard. And if you don't make that correction early on, they're gonna think, oh, well, this is what I'm supposed to do. Supposed to stall the aircraft and let it lose a thousand feet. Well, no, that's not the case. So um, we are going to say correct in a timely manner and going to keep them informed of their progress and have them demonstrate. Right. 
perfect, perfect. Next, let's talk about our in, uh, exams. After we have evaluated them, both in uh, practical and knowledge areas, we have to provide an endorsement. This lesson is not about those endorsements. It's an entirely different lesson, and it's probably going to be a very big lesson. Um, so, just suffice it to say that we have to provide endorsements, and failure on either the practical test or knowledge test is a reflection of the instructor. Um, I subscribe to that 80% of the time or of the way there are just students who go in and choke and you know they they have the clipboard jitters um, but as instructors uh, we should be helping them get over those uh, fears and apprehensions and nervousness um, that's part of the teaching not just the knowledge the book work and the ability but uh, doing it under stress and under pressure so that when that time comes they have prepared for it uh, they, it's not a shock to them. So it's all part of the preparation. Finally, let us talk about our own professional development. We have a responsibility to our students to make sure our information is timely, current, and up to date. Uh, we can't do that, or we, we can't assure that it is if we obtain the CFI rating and then be done and never study anything ever again. Um, that is a surefire way to fall behind. I mean, just think about GPS in the past even like 20 years. An uh, uh, instructor failed to keep up to date with uh, the introduction of the Garmin 430. Uh, they would be quickly... Um, outdated and uh, out to pasture, so to speak. Similarly, we have a lot of technology changes coming, a lot of rules and regulation changes coming in the near future. Uh, ADSB is a big one. That's something that as instructors we need to stay on top of and be current with so that we can give correct information to uh, these students who are coming up in this system. Uh, they won't know any different. The students today don't know anything other than GPS. Um, I mean, they know VURs and stuff like that, but uh, to some of us, GPS was a new concept. Um, students today, uh, it's the here and the now. Same with ADSB and all these other um, uh, implementations. So, how do we ensure our professional development? Well, continuing education. Just about every industry has continuing education. For us, uh, that looks like government sources, you know, FAA in particular, NTSB also. Um, government sources, they're in the highly regulated aviation field. There are tons and tons of resources here. We can also talk about uh, educational slash training institutions. You know, there's countless uh, education or training institutions, um, professional organizations, um, things like that. Something that, you know, maybe falls under government up here a little bit, but same down here. Uh, we have the FAA safety program. Uh, you know, the wings, credits, things like that. So make sure you're taking advantage of those things and remaining up to date. We also have commercial organizations, uh, you know, the, the people out to make a buck. That's not a bad thing. I'm not saying that in a bad way. I'm just saying that's what the commercial organization is. Um, flight safety, you know, things like that. Uh, people that are uh, willing to train you in return for uh, compensation. Industry organizations, 
you know, whether it is uh, maybe you're a seaplane pilot and so you get into a seaplane organization or uh, the flight instructor organizations or whatever it might be, um, taking advantage of those organizations and their expertise in industry research will help keep you uh, abreast of what is going on in the industry. Printed material, yeah, you know, uh, books, pamphlets, things like that, those are important. And electronic. Now going back to, to the uh, technology stuff we talked about earlier, and you look at what the iPad has done for the cockpit or any other uh, electronic flight bag kind of software program, hardware, whatever, uh, has completely changed the ball game. All this stuff here can pretty much be obtained down in here. So anyways, uh, that concludes task E for the fundamentals of instruction, instructor responsibilities, and professionalism. As always, if you would like to completely immerse yourself in this, our reference is FAA handbook, H8083-9 alpha. Thanks for joining. Join me for task F.